Hello everyone, it's me, Immortal2004, and welcome back to another video. Today, I'm going to be exposing a magic trick that AGT, or America's Got Talent, winner, none other than card magician Mr. Shin Lim. He performed this trick, and I'm going to be exposing how he did it. First, I will be doing a performance, and then I will be giving you guys the full tutorial. As always, if you're new to the channel, could you please subscribe and hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video? Like I said, this is going to be a performance and a tutorial, so be sure to stick around for the tutorial. Anyways, let's get to it. Okay, so here is the performance for this awesome Shin Lim trick. And remember, uh, the tutorial is after this, so if you want to learn how it's done, stick around. Okay, so first I'm going to shuffle the cards to make sure that they are, in fact, very well mixed up because you don't want to have any key cards. Okay, so then I would say to my spectator, again, I would have four people if we're not... If I'm, I haven't clarified that yet, so we would have four people. Myself, one person, one person, and another person over here. This could be my spectator, or that could be, but I like to use this person as my spectator. So first I would say to this person, I'd say, I'm going to riffle down the side of the deck, and I want you to call it stop whenever you like. And let's say they say stop right there, so I'd say, alright, I want you to look at that card right there, and since this is the performance, I will not be looking at it, but I will be showing you guys, and I'll put it on the screen too. There you go. And I'll put it right here, and I'll show you, I think that's the same one. Now, I will shuffle these, and I'll simply ask the spectator to put it back anywhere, and let's say they say it goes right here. There you go. And we'll shuffle it again. And I want to confirm that it's probably not on the bottom or on the top. Or a couple cards in. Okay, that looks good. And we'll give it one more shuffle just to really make sure that it is mixed up in here. Now, I will go in and I will split the deck into four equal piles as much as I possibly can. So, we're going to split it up like this. And we're split it up like that. And, uh, let's see how many we have in here. We have, we have one too many. I think we have one too many. Let's, you know what? Why don't we put some over here? And I think these are pretty good, so we'll flip them over. And there we go. Now, I will simply ask my spectator to point to a, car, to point to a pile. Let's say they say this one. I'll say, okay, you take that one. And I'll say, point to another one. And let's say they give it over here and here and over here. Now, I would tell everybody, you're going to hold it in mechanics grip, which is like this. And you take the top card and just place it down. So everybody would place the card down. Just like that. And now I would say you can take some cards off and put some more down. You can put a bunch down, but you're just going to really want to mix these up. And once you're done with your pile, just leave it there, face down. So you can you can really do it randomly. It doesn't matter. So your spectators are busy. And you're just going to do this. Just like that. And you're going to simply mix these. And maybe mix some more. You put four down, and then maybe we'll put three down, and then the final one. And then we'll take these, and we'll put one, two, three, and then we'll mix those. We'll put two down, then we'll put four down, and then we'll mix them, and we'll put three down, and then one. Now, what I'm going to have you do, is you, this is what you're going to say to your spectator. I'm going to tell my spectators that since this is poker, you burn cards, right? So what you do is you take the top card and just burn it. Just burn them. And I would say, okay, but you want to leave some, so I'm going to stop there. But everybody else would keep burning cards, and they keep going. Let's say everybody, he stops there, my spectator stops here, and this person keeps going, and let's say they get down to here. And now let's say this person's like this, and they want to leave it there. So now I'll ask everybody to count. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, okay. Then one, two, three, all right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, so, this is the next cool part of the trick. You would say to your spectator, you'd say, well, you'd say to your spectator, so, you would say that there's about 60% of the cards here, or in this pile, right? 60% is about here. And they would say, yes. And I'd say, okay, for the first time ever, what was your card? And I'll put it on the screen right now. There it is. It's on the screen. And that card, they would say that. And I would say, so I did not force you to pick that, and I did not tell you to pick that. We didn't meet beforehand to, to set this up. And they would say no. And I would say, okay, what do you think the percentage of, the, of that card being in your pile is? And they would say, oh, probably zero. And I'd say, okay, let's, do, let's get crazier. What if it was the top card? And they would say, absolutely not. And I would say, turn over the top card. And there is their card. And, I, and then I would say, and since this is poker, there's going to be four of a kind, right? So that's why I have an ace, why you have an ace, and why you have an ace. If you guys enjoyed this trick, please stick around for the tutorial. Okay, so here is the tutorial for this trick. It is very simple. There is only one sleight of hand required, and that requires you to put whatever card of your choice you want to force on your spectator. Yes, this requires a force, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So for this for this trick, um, well, this performance, I am going to be using the Ace of Spades, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep it on top, and when I'm shuffling with a riffle shuffle, keep that Ace right here. Oops, hold on, please bear with me. Keep it on top of the pile so that it's always there. Now, when you're going to riffle, you're going to put your pressure put pressure on this side, so when you do this, you pull the card off, right? And that leaves it the forced card. So you can literally riffle to any part of the deck, and you can go like this, and you just want to be... Oops, the, my hands are a little bit slippery right now. You can riffle right there, and now your card is already forced, and you know exactly what it is, but you don't want... You want to pretend that you don't. Now... Here's what else you're going to do. You're going to take it out, and you're going to tell them to look at it and not show any of the other spectators. And then what you're going to do is you're going to say, is you're going to tell them to put it back anywhere in the deck. So let's say they're right here. And it genuinely does not matter. And this is a real shuffle. Like, you can do a real shuffle because the next part is all the setup. Now, if the ace ends up on the bottom, shuffle it back in and just do this. What you're going to do is you're going to tell them you're going to make four piles. But what you're doing is you're looking for the first ace from the bottom, and that is your first pile, then your second ace. And if the second ace only has a couple cards, you're just going to count them like this, and you're just going to put a bunch of cards on it. Right? Now remember, your ace is going to... The ace that you're looking for is the ace of spades, and you want to give it to them. So there it is right here. So if it's right there, give it some more cards, and then if you do that right there, and then you can even go and... Move, move things around a little bit and tell them that you're trying to make them even and that you don't that you're not very good with math. Now you flip it over and of course, sorry, wrong pile. The ace of spades is right here on the third pile going this way. So what you're going to do is you are going to tell them to point to a pile and you never ask them to grab a pile. You tell them to point. That way you have magician's choice. So if they point to this one, you would say, okay, you keep that for yourself, and we're going to give everybody else the rest. So you give them that, and that, and that, and it generally doesn't matter as long as your spectator ends up with their card. Now, of course, their card's going to be on top, so when you're doing mechanics grip, when you ask them to deal down one card, they're putting their card at the bottom, and then the rest of it does not matter. Like, you can put whatever you want down. Their card will still be on the bottom of the pile. And basically what this trick is doing is it is allow it is basically just moving the card from the bottom to the top, from the bottom to the top. So now when it's on the bottom, here I'll just make this quick and easy. And you always want to place their card down first. So all of these are going to have aces on the bottom right now because you set it up like that. And let's just put it down like this and place one down, place it like this, place it like this. Place it like this, place it like that, and now when you burn the cards, 
they're going to keep their card on the bottom. And you may be wondering, how do you get it back up to the top? And I'll show you. So you just burn as many cards as you want. But you want to tell them to leave cards. So tell them to leave about three or four so it's substantial. And they can keep burning and just burn the cards. Right? And you want to get about 60% of the cards there. Now, when they're counting, it is imperative. If you don't know what that word means, it means it is like substantial, like it's critical that they place them like this because that puts their card on top. If they count it like this, you can tell them, no, count like this. We want to stack these up in a nice neat pile like that, one on top of the other. Don't enforce it. Don't tell them why. Don't, just tell them to place them one on top of the other because chances are they don't know where their card is. They think it's in here. So then you would insinuate, uh, not insinuate, you would state that you, that there's about 60% of the cards here, and they would agree, and you would say, now, what are the chances of your card being in your pile? And they would say, uh, probably 20%. And you would say, okay, for the first time ever, what was your card? And they would tell everybody, and they would say, it's the Ace of Spades. And you would say, okay, let's go a little crazier here. What if your card was the top card in your pile? And they would say, absolutely no way, 0%. And then you would do the great reveal, however you want it. And it will work. This trick will work no matter what, as long as you follow these steps. And I hope you guys have fun doing this trick because I sure enjoyed figuring it out. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it for this trick. But anyways, that's all for today, guys. If you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you're new to the channel, please subscribe. And hit that notification bell so you don't miss another video. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of your day, or night, or evening, or morning, wherever you are. And remember, when you subscribe, you become immortal too. Peace out.